Joan Fontaine was a talented actress who rose to fame in Hollywood in the 1940s and 1950s. Born in Tokyo, Japan on October 22, 1917 to a British family, Joan was the younger sister of the famous actress, Olivia de Havilland. With her polished performances and exceptional talent, Joan quickly made a name for herself in the film industry. She was particularly impressive in two of Alfred Hitchcock's films, Rebecca in 1940 and Suspicion the following year. Her acting abilities were recognized by the Academy, and she received three nominations for Best Actress, winning the award once for her role in Suspicion. As her movie career began to wind down in the 1960s, Joan shifted her focus to other areas of the entertainment industry, including Broadway and television. She also had many non-acting interests and was known for her love of cooking, ballooning, and golf. Overall, Joan Fontaine was a versatile and multi-talented individual who left a lasting impression on the entertainment industry. The family of Joan moved to Saratoga, California, when Joan was still a baby, following the doctor's advice due to her poor health. After they settled down in California, their father went back to Japan to resume his practice. Sadly, the parents got divorced when Joan was only two years old and her mother, Lillian, soon remarried to a store manager, George Fontaine, who was strict and disciplinary in nature. This new stepfather was not well received by either Joan or her older sister, Olivia, who also didn't get along with each other. Joan and Olivia had a troubled relationship growing up, marked by jealousy and frequent fights. According to Joan, Olivia struggled to accept the younger sister vying for their mother's affection, leading to a lifelong rivalry. Joan was a highly intelligent child, with an IQ of 160, and shown academically at Los Gatos High School in Saratoga. After completing her studies at the high school, she went to Japan to live with her father and study at the American school for a year. Upon her return to California, she developed an interest in acting, following in her sister's footsteps who had already begun pursuing a career in the theater. Joan kickstarted her stage career with various West Coast companies, using the name Joan Burfield, as her sister Olivia had already claimed the family name. The name Burfield was derived from Burfield Street in Hollywood. Her stage debut was opposite the renowned Mae Robson in a 1935 production of Kind Lady. The same year, she made her feature film debut with a small role in No More Ladies. Joan also experimented with the name Joan St. John for a brief period until she adopted her stepfather's surname, as per the suggestion of a fortune teller who believed it was a name of success. Joan's talent soon caught the attention of RKO, who signed her up to a contract. In 1937, she starred opposite Fred Astaire in his first RKO film Without Ginger Rogers, A Damsel in Distress. However, the film failed to perform well at the box office. Over the next three years, Joan appeared in a number of movies, including The Women alongside Norma Shearer and Joan Crawford in 1939. Although she was a talented actress, she failed to make a strong impression and her contract with RKO expired in 1939, without being renewed. Joan's career took a turn for the better in 1940, when she won the highly sought-after role of the second Mrs. De Winter in Alfred Hitchcock's Hollywood debut movie Rebecca. The role was secured after a rigorous six-month testing period. Her performance in the movie received widespread acclaim and she was even nominated for the Best Actress Award. Although she lost out to Ginger Rogers and Kitty Foyle, she went on to win the Best Actress Oscar the following year for her brilliant performance in another Hitchcock film, Suspicion. It's noteworthy that this was the only time Hitchcock directed an actor to an Oscar-winning performance, making Jones win even more significant. The film was a huge success and solidified Jones' position as a star in the industry. Jones' career was in its golden era and she had surpassed her sister's fame, despite Olivia's successful performance in Gone with the Wind in 1939. During this time, Joan starred in a string of strong romantic melodramas such as This Above All in 1942, The Constant Nymph the following year, for which she received her third Academy Award nomination, Jane Eyre in 1944, and Letter from an Unknown Woman in 1948. She also appeared alongside Bing Crosby in The Emperor Waltz in 1948 and went on to make more romantic films such as September Affair and Born to be Bad in 1950. 
However, the movie Darling, How Could You? also known as Rendezvous, in 1951 marked a turning point in Joan's acting career. The movie was a disappointment, but it also marked the start of a new persona for her. Instead of playing the shy, well-bred ingenue as she had in most of her early films, Joan began to play more mature, worldly women, often in an unpleasant, calculating manner as seen in The Bigamist in 1953, Casanova's Big Night in 1954, and Island in the Sun in 1957. As Joan's success in the film industry began to wane, she found herself growing more interested in the luxurious lifestyle of the jet-set crowd. She had always been an adventurous person with many hobbies beyond acting, including tuna fishing, fox hunting, golf, and even balloon racing. In fact, her balloon racing team once won a race in Holland. Joan was also a licensed pilot and a skilled cordon bleu cook, which kept her quite occupied in the European social scene. Despite her many interests, Joan never left the entertainment industry entirely. As her film career slowed down, she began making appearances on television, participating in panel games and appearing as a guest star on shows like Wagon Train and The Bing Crosby Show. She also continued to act on the stage, receiving great reviews for her role in Tea and Sympathy on Broadway in 1954, and appearing in productions of Noel Coward's Private Lives, Alfred Hitchcock's Dial M for Murder, and an Austrian production of The Lion in Winter. Joan's career remained active in the 1970s. She capitalized on her fame by joining the popular lecture circuit and speaking to students and women's groups about fascinating topics such as the love story of Robert and Elizabeth Barrett Browning. She also continued her work in television, appearing in shows like Ryan's Hope, for which she received an Emmy nomination, The Love Boat, and Hotel. Her final on-screen performance was as Queen Lyudmila in the television film Good King Wenceslas in 1994. Throughout her life, Joan was married four times. Her first marriage was to British actor Brian Ahern, which lasted from 1939 to 1945. She then married actor and producer William Dozier from 1946 to 1951, and with him, she had a daughter named Debbie. From 1952 to 1961, she was married to producer and writer Collier Young. Finally, she was married to journalist Alfred Wright Jr. from 1964 to 1969. Joan's family life had its ups and downs. In 1952, she adopted a young Peruvian girl named Martita, who later ran away from home. Unfortunately, both Martita and Joan's biological daughter, Debbie, became estranged from her. Despite this, Joan lived a life of prosperity with her interests in cattle farming, real estate, and the oil industry. However, her relationship with her sister, Olivia de Havilland, made headlines as the two were rumored to have not spoken since 1975, though both women denied this claim. In her later years, Joan lived a quiet retirement in Carmel, California where she spent her time tending to her gardens and caring for her beloved dogs. On December 16, 2013, Joan passed away peacefully in her sleep at the age of 96. Joan Fontaine will always be remembered as a legend and may she rest in peace.